Welcome to video 2 of 4 in this series, looking at floating point numbers on the Omron PLC. To recap, in video 1 we created a set of code that was uploaded onto our Omron PLC and the code allowed us to work out the volume of a pizza setting to both the radius and the height of the pizza. In this tutorial we're going to concentrate on configuring the interface that will allow us to set these values dynamically and display the answer to the user. In tutorial 3 we will set up a high speed timer in order to control the stepper motor and output the correct amount of dough in this case based on the volume. The stepper motor will output one centimeter cubed per rotation. Finally in the fourth part We'll look at how we can use multiple screens in order to inform the user when the stepper motor has completed its cycles and has actually outputted the dough required and we'll let the user set new values for the next pizza. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is quickly review our PLC code. So within CX Programmer we had one, two, three, four, five variables, the pizza radius the height, the radius squared, the volume and our constant which was pi and in our section we had one variable which we were setting on the first cycle which was pi. We took the pizza size, we multiplied it by itself to get a squared value, we then multiplied the square value by the height and we put the output of that into volume, we then multiplied the volume by pi and we output it back into the same value for volume in order to get our final answer. So the first thing we're going to do to set up the HMI is open up CX Designer. I've covered CX Designer in some detail in a different video, but in this video I'm just going to quickly configure it in order for you to get an idea of how to start. The model that we're using today is going to be the NX5TQ1V2. That's the one that we have in the lab. The system version can remain at 8 and we'll give it a project title of Pizza. And our file name can be Pizza Test. I'll call mine 1 because I've already created it. OK, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to set up a single screen. This is my blank screen. But the first thing we need to do is configure the network. So within COM settings, I'm going to just delete the serial. We don't use the serial on the back of the HMI. Instead, what we use is the Ethernet adapter. I'm going to enable the Ethernet adapter, and I'm going to set my IP address for the HMI to 192.168.1.2, and my network address is 1, and my node address is 2. Next thing I need to do is add a host, so I'm going to add a host. I'll rename my host to PLC. I'm going to change the protocol the host is going to use, or the HMI is going to use to communicate with the host to Ethernet IP. And I'm going to enter the IP address of my PLC, which in this case is 192.168.1.1. And that's it. I've simply configured my HMI. The next thing I need to do is go back into my CX programmer, go to my symbols, and I'm going to select the symbols I want to edit. So I need to edit the radius, the height, and I'm also going to bring across the volume, even though the volume is an output. I'm going to take the three of them, and I'm going to control C. Come across to CX Designer, go to Common Settings, Symbol Library, and control V to copy them in. It asks me where I want to copy them from, and it's the PLC. OK, so now we have our three variables available for us that we can now assign to different parts. To do this, I'm going to put in three numeric inputs. One for the radius, one for the height, and one for the output, which in this case is going to be volume. Now I need to assign the inputs here to actual addresses within the PLC. So to do that, I double click. And I'm going to come across here to where it says address, and I'm going to select the appropriate address. 
in this case it's pizza size. Click OK. I also need to configure the actual input type as a real number and it's going to have two decimal places. I'm going to set the units and scale to centimeters and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to repeat this for the next one. Real number, two decimal places, centimeters and I'm going to put in the value for the height and OK. The volume, again, that's going to be a real number. It's going to be two decimal places. And for the units, it's going to be centimeters. And the PLC value for the volume is this. So now set up. So I need to add one last thing, and that's a push button. I'm just going to add one simple push button that will allow me to calculate the next value. Within my PLC code, within CX Programmer, I'm going to go back to Section. And you can see here that I created this working bit called working bit 0 0.01 in order to activate this code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update my symbols. I'm going to add a new symbol, and it's going to be HM i underscore push button and I'm going to give that a value of working bit 0 0.01 if you're confused where I got the W from I have another video on the different data types that we can use and how we set them up so that's now configured just check my section and you can see now that HMI push button will activate this code so I'm going to come back into the symbols I'm going to select HMI push button Control C, come back to my symbol library within CX Designer, and I'm going to copy that across. Now that's across, I can come to my button, I can select that value, and now the button is assigned. Now let's test our code and see does it work. To test our code, we're going to select Test from the Tools menu, and we're going to say Yes to all. We have two options here, connect to CX Simulator or connect to PLC. If we were in the lab and we have access to the PLC, we would select this option. But as we don't, and I'm working from home, I'm just going to select connect to CX Simulator. This will simulate the code with CX Programmer. So it's configuring now and it's starting up. You can see now that my program is now running and it's running in simulation mode. This has come up here, and you can see that I have two values set, 5.5 .5 and 8. So in our previous example, I think we set 5 and 10 as our two values. I click OK, and I should now get the value 785.4. You can see here that I haven't actually sized these right, and you can't see the CM at the end. We'll fix that later. Let's check our answer by going into Google and selecting 5 and 10 and our answer is 785.4 and 785.4. So that works and we've successfully created a very limited and kind of ugly looking HMI. Let's fix some of the issues here and give it some labels and make it a little bit more usable. So I'm going to close that and exit the simulation and I'm going to go back into CX Designer. Okay, let's add some labels. To add a label, I'm going to select label from the menu and I'm going to put three labels, one beside each of my values. I'm going to take this opportunity just to resize that so I can see the CM. And connect and line up my labels. So my first label is going to be the radius. My second is going to be the height. I'm 
and my third is going to be the volume. Still looks a little bit ugly, so let's try to make it look a little bit more professional. The first thing I can do is change the background color by right-clicking, going to Screen and Sheet Properties, I'm going to go to Background Options, and I'm going to pick White. My labels kind of stick out here a bit, so I'll change their background as well. Click on the first, go to Background, I'm going to select White, and I'm going to go to Label, Text Alteration, and I'm going to select a different font. Let's select Arial. I'm going to do the same for this label. And I'm going to select Arial again. And I'm going to select Arial again. In here I also have the option to change the size of the font change how it's uh, positioned and make it bold or italic and I can change the color but let's just leave them at the default for now that's starting to look a lot better I'll change the background color of my input boxes as well make them white Okay, so that's my three background colors changed. I should also add a label onto my push button. So I'll double click on the push button, go to labels, and I'll just add a label, go. Not a very good label for a HMI, but it will do for this demonstration. Take the volume here, which is at the moment set as an input, even though it's a value that's set by the PLC, and double click, go to control flags, and let's just disable that so people can't input new values. Let's run and let's test our code again. Simulate with CX Simulator. That's starting to look a lot better. Let's just change this and make it 10. Enter and go. There's my new value. And you can see here that I cannot select the volume. It's been locked. As far as HMI design goes, this isn't great. It looks a little bit better, but it's missing key information. So within class, I want you to look at the HMI design rules and see can you make this a little bit better. Maybe some more informative information. You might need a logo or a diagram to show the user what's actually happening. In the next tutorial, we'll move on and we'll have a look at using the high-speed timers in order to control the stepper motor.